Welcome to the Ad Aster podcast. Today we have with us again Professor Baudet, uh, Jean-Patrice Baudet. Um, welcome. welcome and thank, thank you, you. <laughs> to come with us. So uh, we, um, just to, to, to introduce uh, the professor, uh, uh, he's a professor of history at the University of Orléans. Uh, and he has wrote extensively on the history of astrology in the Middle Ages, mainly and in, well, not only, but European and know. French yes. context. Um, so most of the articles uh, found today on, on that topic are by uh, the professor. Uh, welcome uh, once more. And we are here exactly to, to speak about um, your work, which has been... Uh, Republished and revised in a new edition um, by Microgos Library. Um, so, how was it to 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 do this this kind of work? So, to do a, a republication and a revision of work that you had already done, and some some have had some years on them, I think. Yes, there, there are some articles which are, are very old and uh, quite a bit. I had, it was impossible to do that before um, that I finished an article about uh, Giovanni of Lenin or uh, straight eyes about uh, the, the, the appearance uh, of the Great Schism of uh, 1378. Uh, that I, I think it is uh, the last article that I published in uh, in. Uh, in uh, about six or seven years ago. So uh, I was waiting to have a, a puzzle quite uh, coherent with one article at the beginning about horoscopes of princes, the 12th, 15th century, and then uh, 13 articles, 13 papers, uh, with in approximately uh, chronology, chronological order from the beginning of the 14th century to the uh, end of the 15th, beginning of the 16th century. So um, it concerns mainly France, but also a little bit uh, Italy and uh, a little bit also uh, you know, European, Central European countries, and especially uh, Hungary, with uh, Matthias Corvinus, the king of Hungary, uh, second half of the 15th century, who is one of the greatest uh, amateur and greatest uh, sponsor of astronomical and astrological studies in, of the 15th century, uh, and get uh, very, very brilliant and interesting, fascinating library uh, containing many, many uh, manuscripts of uh, excellent level uh, on astronomy and astrology. So uh, I was obliged to wait to have something coherent to, to publish it. And so it's, it was done and I was very, just at the moment, at the moment that I'm I, uh, I began to be uh, retired because I'm retired now from the beginning of the of uh, last year, and just uh, the the publication should, so it uh, was done just at the good moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I must say when we say that these some of these articles were written before, they remain extremely uh, mm -hmm. relevant because. I read most of these, not all of them, but uh, I mean most of them, when I was uh, preparing my PhD, and I had the pleasure of re-reading them again. And we do learn always uh, a lot, not only about the application of astrology in the court or in political uh, milieu, but um, also about the, the all the complex a web of relations between astrological um, 
counselors and physicians and other political advisors and all this. And um, this is so fascinating when we when we look at it. And um, because you just organized all these articles in one edition, I wish I had had this when I got <laughs> Because I read some Sorry, of them. It was a little, day, a little bit late for you. <laughs> no, it's never late. I, am, <laughs> I have it now. <laughs> and this is important. Yeah. Uh, it, it, is, it is very relevant. And you, had, you were so careful and so detailed in um, um, updating all the, all the articles mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. most recent research. So they, they are extremely extremely present extremely relevant for mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. so well publicly thank you <laughs> <laughs> yes it was quite a pleasure uh, i must say it was uh, well and uh, uh, i was very but, but uh, it uh, asked me to, to to do many work and, and, and for example uh, to uh, the, the article about uh, Horoscopes of Queens. The, the first, the second version is not at all the same. But well, it seems to be the same. But in fact, uh, the, 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 the progression of, of research uh, since the first mm -hmm. publication about uh, 12 or 13 uh, years ago uh, is so important, especially about uh, uh, Central Europe, uh, about Italy. Uh, I didn't have much to say about uh, Italian horoscopes uh, when I published the first uh, the, the first uh, edition of this article, and uh, there are many progress uh, that have been done and many progress to be done now uh, since uh, there is a very very interesting dossier about. Uh, uh, Gerard of Savioneta's uh, hundred of judgments of astrological judgments in the 13th century addressed uh, to the Marquis of uh, uh, of Cremona and to Enzolino of Romano and other important rulers of uh, central northern uh, Italy of the middle of the 13th century. So there are many work to do yet. <laughs> and that's very, very, very fine, very exciting. Yeah, it's, it it is. Is, yeah. And, and this is how knowledge progresses. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, write something, uh, some, and then time goes by and we revisit what we wrote and we update it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is how our research progresses. This is, this yes. is the interesting part of our work yeah. also. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> one thing that I think it's wonderful about this edition is that not only you you have the chance to update and, and to and to review uh, some of these older uh, writings, but also uh, they are now available. Because I remember at the time when Elena was doing her research, one of our problems was to acquire some certain copies because some of them probably in France they they would you could find them in the library, but Outside of France, it would be complicated. Uh, some journals yeah. don't have the same circulation. Yes. I had the same problem, and I must say that uh, one of my chances was to be connected with the Ptolemy uh, Arab Latin uh, team of Munich because they have a, a library uh, 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 with many, many papers that I. So, thanks to David Just uh, <laughs> for his work, uh, incredibly useful for the history of astrology. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, was there any of these, uh, of these 13, 14 in fact, articles, uh, I don't know if this makes sense, but which one of them uh, gave you more um, challenge to, if, some, if there was some uh, perhaps the, the one of the oldest about uh, really having uh, astrology and politics uh, because it was one of my first one uh, just uh, uh, 
it was the communication at uh, uh, Colloquio Minorio already, but I, I was not uh, uh, not yet uh, in the in the University of Orient at this time uh, as uh, uh, as professor or as uh, anything else, and uh, I had to publish many things, and it, it is one of the longest and one of the most difficult because of the the the, 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 the letter of the astrologer. Uh, Jacques Lost to Louis XI was copied by really an, an awful scribe who didn't understand a thing about and so we had many corrections or suggestions of corrections to do. And the other one is certainly the uh, article about uh, uh, the papacy of uh, Avignon and Clement the, the sixth, so, because uh, the, the field is is enormous. In fact, I have only published at the end the, the, the letter of uh, Jean de Mur, of Jean of Muris to uh, the Pope, but there are many many things uh, who have done. Who have been done about astronomy, about the uh, the, the Alphonsine tables and the introduction of the uh, Alphonsine tables in Paris with London Jean de Meur and others, uh, about the problem of the reform of the calendar, uh, who is a very very great subject who has been uh, studied by many people. So. They are the two biggest articles and the two most difficult, I think. It will be the third uh, and the fourth articles in the list. I remember reading them. They are extremely interesting, but they are really complex. I mean, they are very encompassing. And I suppose you had to update uh, a few. Um, when you think of the beginning of your career, when you began writing and researching on astrology and now uh, what are the main differences that you can if there are differences <laughs> in your opinion you mean about what precisely about the historiographical uh, the the way people address and the way people understand what was happening mm -hmm. in this in this courts of kings and everything regarding astrology yes i, I must say that the great, for the great majority of historians, astrology is uh, what uh, uh, Jacques Chiffreau uh, said one time to me. It is a, a, a religion à mystère, huh? a, a mysterious religion. <laughs> so, so really, uh, it, it's difficult to to explain to uh, to uh, colleagues what we are doing. And uh, <laughs> yes. I remember, I remember uh, a very, very extremely interesting su subject. It's not at the center, but uh, of all my studies. But is uh, the chronicle of uh, chroni uh, chronicle of uh, Giovanni Villani. Giovanni Villani, who is the greatest, the, the greatest historian uh, of Florence at the first half, half of the 14th century. And there are many astrological passages about the birth, the, the, the birth of Florence, about the great flood of Florence in 1333, and the, the theological uh, explanation which uh, that uh, has been the subject of a public uh, question uh, between theologians and astrologers. What? There is a flood. There had been that, that flood in France in 1333. And the two explanations are complementary. But uh, in Italian, uh, Giovanni Villani has transcribed that in very, very much detailed manner the, the, the terms of the debate. Uh, it's 
extremely interesting. And uh, he did so uh, either for the conjunctions of 1345 uh, with many, and he report the text probably written in uh, Latin uh, by uh, Paolo de Labac or Paolo de Gam da Gomari, uh, who was one of the best mathematicians of the uh, 14th century Italy, with many, many details. So, uh, but it's a, a source uh, very, very uh, Interesting, but we have not the equivalent in France, for example, at the same at the same date. So one of the questions here is why uh, Giovanni Villani is, is so uh, reliable on a technical technical point of view. It is the only one uh, chronic I know with a horoscope. Mm. Uh, a real horoscope of the coming of uh, we the Hungarian in in, in Florence mm -hmm. uh, may be the result of an election or an interrogation. I, I don't know exactly, but so it, it's absolutely unique. And so one of the the problem here is uh, the astrological acculturation in Florence was very deep. Uh, for a, a, a milieu of uh, merchants, of, uh, of the rulers, etc. Uh, and, and why it is the case in Florence and not uh, the, came, the case at the same level uh, elsewhere. So uh, the problem is there are publications about that, but the problem is the comparison. So if you want to make a map uh, of uh, horoscopes, of astrological judgments, uh, you have uh, to think about it. Uh, because in Florence there is no university yet, not a real university before uh, 1348, uh, just the, 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 the death of uh, Villani. So, uh, uh, Florence has no university. It's not the same as Bologna. Bologna has a university with uh, uh, astrologers already paid as astrologers mm -hmm. uh, at, from the beginning well, of the 14th century or the end of the 13th, but not Florence. So uh, the urban, uh, the, the civical, I think astrology belong to the civic culture, so to the lay and to the clerical and lay culture of a big city at the apogee of this of his power uh, just uh, at the 14th century. And that, that's very interesting to, to see that. And uh, when you see the the historical tradition in France, it's uh, very much uh, poor on this point of view. And it's not at all a hazard. I think this is an area, the, the study of medieval astrology and early modern astrology, it's an, uh, an area of research that requires context. Mm -hmm. uh, because without context, if an historian of another kind of uh, discipline just uh, happens to find some writings on astrology without context, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely absurd. So uh, the, what, uh, what we have now, thanks to you and other researchers, is context. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. can understand that is a logic. Probably it's not the same logic as we have now, but it's their logic. And they follow their logic. And this is very important mm -hmm. for an historian to understand what those people were thinking, even though it's different from our way of, th uh, of thinking. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. provided context specifically uh, for France and Italy, but it, it is applicable for other contexts because this astrological logic 
it's the same in mm-hmm. all countries. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this is precious for for context and for understanding. And, and you were raising uh, uh, one topic which I, I, I'm, I'm going around uh, with my own work, which is the uh, teaching of astrology. Uh, when you have this um, culture of astrology everywhere, uh, and you, as you were saying, you don't have the university in the specific context that you were talking. So where are people learning astrology? How, how is the dissemination and the creation of this culture at a knowledgeable level? It's, it's occurring. Uh, and I've, I've realized, uh, now that I'm finished my own research, that we don't have a lot of answers to, to that question. Um, it's probably yeah. for, for, for the case of, of Florence, uh, we know that there are many schools of mathematics for mm-hmm. merchants. Mm-hmm. And I, won't, I, I don't say that merchants were very uh, aware about astrological techniques, but the connections mm-hmm. between mathematics and uh, uh, practical mathematics and uh, practical uh, astronomy astrology was quite uh, important in, 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 in the city states of uh, center and the central. Um, so we don't know exactly uh, there's a problem of sources of materials about uh, uh, the other. Uh, not the universities, but the, the, the urban uh, schools. Uh, and, uh, for example, I have another example uh, in Dijon, uh, who was one of the capitals of the Bolivian king, of the Bolivian dukes in the 15th century. Uh, there is no university uh, either, but there is a, a, a quite a, Good quality high school, uh, urban high school, uh, with certainly uh, studies uh, about uh, astronomy and astrology, perhaps at a not very high level, but not not uh, not not so bad. With connections with Paris uh, also, but it depends on the politi- political situation. Mm-hmm. So perhaps we have a scenario, and this is of course a possibility, that these more technical schools would have within the mathematical course um, the teaching of astrology, or at least the basic principles that would allow people then to, to read books and, and, and continue their studies. That's what happened later. Yeah. And the, the, yeah. Because this is what, hap- what I've seen here in my work, because I've been working in mainly 17th century Portugal, and a specific case here in which we have a Jesuit college, that is astrology exactly in the mat- the class of mathematics as one of the topics. So, uh, and I believe that most of the practicing astrologers of that period would have learned either directly by attending the college or perhaps by materials that, that were coming out, copies of materials that, of the lessons of the college that would be then circulating. And uh, that's visibly, there's visibly a culture of astrology in Portugal at, in the in mid 17th century that originates from these teachings. So probably what, what I'm seeing here is a model that dates much, much, much back uh, to the Middle Ages and, and, and other countries. And we're talking about... Uh, I think it's, it's quite the case for Italy, perhaps for Portugal, I don't know exactly. Uh, it's quite different in France because in, in France, in Paris, the, the faculty of theology was too much predominant. Mm-hmm. And so uh, all the, uh, the disciplines of the quadrivium uh, and uh, astronomy, astrology, uh, were considered as uh, less important and less pre- prestigious mm-hmm. than, uh, than uh, theology. In, 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 I must say, in, in Bologna too, Bologna is the capital of the of of right of the, the uh, of law, not not of astrology. But there is a, a study both of arts and medicine and a connection 
between medicine and, and astrology, uh, which is much more uh, frequent and systematic in Bologna than in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the situation is more complicated yet by the fact that in the Faculty of Theology, or more exactly in the college uh, founded uh, from the beginning of the from the middle of the 13th century, there are sometimes students uh, who are theologians and who are interested in astrology. For example, uh, Peter of Limoges, uh, in the second half of the uh, 13th century, and uh, uh, one of the one of the most uh, interesting interesting thing that has discovered Laure Mulot on the PhD, very interesting about the um, Collège de Sorbonne, is that uh, some of uh, uh, the fellows or the host uh, of the Collège de Sorbonne uh, were very interested in, in astronomy and astrology. And especially, she found the trace of uh, Jean Desmures, the famous astronomer, uh, who uh, annotated many manuscripts of the of the Sorbonne Library, and uh, uh, with all the manuscripts belonged, who belong, which belonged to uh, Richard of Fournival and uh, Pierre Peter of Limoges uh, in the 13th century, and um, adapted some. And you have, for example, an extraordinary manuscript, very known for six years, many years, by all the, 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 the best uh, specialists of historian of, uh, historian of astrology, like Charles Burnett, for example. And that manuscript was annotated by Jean de Mur mm. and uh, at the place, he made an horoscope of the birth of Shees in the treatise uh, at, at, at the, just near the, 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 the treatise of uh, Abu Masha or, or on, on great uh, conjunctions. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And uh, so, uh, to, to go back to the, the first question, uh, I had just discovered that when reading the, the, the PhD of Law Miolo, who has been uh, uh, defensed uh, three years ago. And, uh, uh, well, <laughs> my point of view about Jean de Mur, of course, became totally different when I discovered that. Then, in 1992, when I published the first, uh, the, the first, uh, uh, my first article about uh, astrology at the court of the popes of uh, Avignon, of course. Yeah. That is also the interesting part of our um, research. We are always finding new things. And, new pieces uh, of the puzzle. New pieces of the puzzle. <laughs> and uh, just because we find something different, doesn't invalidate the, whatever we have done. This is like mm. another step in knowledge. And uh, we could not be here unless we had all the other steps that led us here. So th this is also interesting that um, sometimes we got it wrong and then we got it right. And then there's another piece of the puzzle, as you say, another piece of information. And we have to reframe again our ideas. Mm -hmm. well, I like that. It keeps <laughs> us active. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just just uh, two years ago, two, 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 two days ago, uh, we uh, I, I, there were a, a, a seminar about a manuscript uh, kept in the Escorial Library, uh, who has many notes uh, by Jean de Mieux. Mm -hmm. And just uh, astronomical notes, but also notes about his library, 
about the, about his uh, his books books landed to other scholars some 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 of them very known some uh, of them no, not known and just at the moment there is uh, at the end of the manuscript there is a, 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 a table done by probably not by him about the, the motion of the eighth sphere hmm. and uh, there is um, a, net, a, a very big annotation by him, which is a text about the problem of the motion of the eighth sphere and the uh, and some examples. Uh, just before the table, you have uh, at the table you have the, the position of the eighth sphere. Uh, at uh, the, the the date of 16 after the birth of Christ and uh, 1764 just in the middle of the 18th century mm -hmm. why? what the connection with astronomy with, uh, mm -hmm. why these dates and not others mm -hmm. and I think that one of the possible answers is an astrological problem hmm. uh, connected with, with what astrologers call uh, the stations of the eight spheres. Uh, the Alphonsine tables have a conception of the motion of the eight spheres uh, that uh, a total a uh, cycle of the movement of the motion of the eight spheres uh, has a, a duration of 7,000 years. Of course, it's not a hazard. And, well, in fact, be the, so the, 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 the two, the table for 16 and the table for 17, 64, it's a quarter of 7,000 years. Mm -hmm. And there is a treatise of Jean de Bruges on the middle of the 14th century uh, who spoke, who speak about the, speaks about the four stations of the eight spheres corresponding to a very important uh, political and religious uh, and so that's why he says that in his treatise about astrology at the end of the world, founded partly on the uh, material provided by the Alphonsine tables, that uh, there will be a, a station of the eighth sphere uh, in 1765, 60, uh, and uh, a cycle of uh, of uh, of Saturn in the 1789, hmm. uh, and uh, uh, that's uh, Peter of Ay Piadai who yes, talks about who is one of the main sources of Jean de Bruges, and in fact, so the, the result of all that is that in a very very technical. Uh, Manuscript of what we call, can call uh, the astronomical uh, corpus, uh, main corpus of the beginning of the 14th century. We have annotations by Jean de Mur and others uh, which have some motivations uh, purely astronomical, mm -hmm. but which may be connected with astrological and eschatological purpose. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, 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 the cycle of 7,000 years uh, and the duration, the possible duration of the world of uh, 7,000 years, it's very important uh, on, uh, uh, at the end of the Middle Ages. And of course, uh, you probably know that uh, Christoph 
Colomb, uh, Simon de Far, and other scholars of the 15th century have read uh, Pierre Lailly and said, well, uh, and Simon de Far said, it's agreed to, to, to expected uh, that the end of the world uh, it's not, was not immediate at all, but uh, was postponed to the middle or the end of the 18th century. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and nothing to do with, uh, apparently, uh, uh, even, even in Nostradamus, in Nostradamus, uh, uh, Pierre Bradamour has uh, very well uh, shown uh, in his book uh, written in uh, 1993 uh, uh, that the trepidation of the Eighth Sphere is one of, ma of the main theme, uh, one of the main source of inspirations of Nostradamus in his, his famous centuries. So, uh, well, the connection between uh, very high-level astronomical uh, speculations and uh, astrological and astrological prophetical uh, uh, um, reflections. It, it, so, it's very interesting to, to study. Yes, it is because the, the, it is this connection between studying the movement itself and then uh, attaining some sort of interpretation that meaning what is this going to mean because that's <laughs> i think that's we have to take in mind that that's always in the back of their minds we, we're, we're studying we're seeing all these movements larger uh, millennial movements or smaller movements and all of that in their minds has a meaning it has an influence it has a, a some kind of effect it's on, part on of a yeah. cycle. So, yeah. so that's always there in one measure or another. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. It was it's their the cultural level. context. I, I'm, I'm really into this word again, context, because it was, it was their uh, the way they, they saw the world. And um, another thing that we take from your words, it is we really, uh, I mean, people who study astrology. We really need to look at astronomical documents mm -hmm. because they contain yeah. important information for our research. Yeah. Okay. Even on, on practices, um, practices, calculations. So uh, um, there is this, this well, straightforward relation between the ability to calculate and, and whatever we are going to use in astronomical, astrological um, practices. So uh, sometimes we forget we look at the astrological documents and you're forgetting, yes, but to do that, they need uh, material, mathematical and astronomical material to, 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 to be able. So one thing influences the other, uh, and, and that's quite an important... Yeah. Uh, even even Copernicus, even Copernicus, we, we have nothing uh, original to have been... He wrote nothing uh, about astrology, uh, strictly speaking. But in his library, he had uh, an example. He had uh, the uh, quadripartitum of uh, Ptolemy, and he annotated the text hmm. in a quite interesting manner. Hmm. And uh, so even Copernicus, who is suspects to be not interested in astrology, in astrology, was in fact. Yes. yes, we were talking about this with David just the other day, and exactly, uh, we have to keep in mind that, and I'm seeing that in my research, and I'm seeing that all over the place. Even the mathemat even mathematicians. Uh, or astronomers who are not particularly interested in astrology. They don't practice it, but they do have a practical knowledge of, of, the, of, uh, of the material. So they might not do horoscopes or not use it particularly, but they know it and they're very well aware of how it works. Yes. It's there in one way or the other, and we cannot forget this. So Copernicus, perhaps he didn't use it, but it's there and he knows Yes, and and 
one of the reason of uh, of the, uh, his research was probably the 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 uh, relevance or the non relevance of the astrological predictions mm -hmm. uh, he had uh, uh, he knew uh, very well when he studied uh, astronomy and astrology in uh, in Bologna uh, at the end of the 15th century he had some professors uh, as Domenico Maria Novara uh, who was a very important astrologer uh, at this time and who made systematic uh, annual uh, pronostications and uh, of course in Bologna it was very important because the annual pronostication of the professor of astrology was uh, published and there is a, a, an abstract of it uh, uh, in, 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 on the wall of the uh, of one of, of the baton uh, of, the, of, the, of the university. So it's a, it's a public uh, yeah, the, um, the results of astrology. Yeah, the public service, yes, 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 yes. It's a, it's a very famous example uh, to demonstrate how how functions are of the of the university uh, on, on the dissemination of the predictions, almanacs, are more responsible for the quality uh, of the of the almanacs and the prognostications. Almanacs would be another source of <laughs> important study and also uh, it could be um, it would be also interesting to, to organize sometime in the future in another life perhaps <laughs> when we have going all the time all the almanacs that we have compare different techniques compare sources that would be mm -hmm. another cultural map of the practices of mm -hmm. astrology in Europe and I'm also including not only France and Portugal and Spain and England but also uh, Eastern Europe, because they also had, that would be something extremely interesting. Comparative study mm -hmm. of Almanac. Yes, that would be lovely. Very, very good, uh, very interesting PhD about the uh, Ottoman Empire, uh, astrology in the Ottoman Empire, that probably, yeah. probably know. And uh, there are many comparisons to do, very interesting, because uh, uh, the uh, and at the time of Bayezid II, at the end of the 15th century, there are about five or six uh, official astrologers. Uh, so, more, much more than, than in, in, uh, uh, around the, the King of France or, or so on. But um, it, it seems to me that. Uh, uh, Perhaps in the East, the the importance of astrology was perhaps greater, because the influence of the church was quite problematic for the leaking uh, the, the, the public influence of astrology. Uh, for example, uh, when the chronicles of uh, uh, of uh, around Timur Long, about the famous conqueror Tamer Long, mm -hmm. uh, said that uh, uh, the famous uh, great mosque Bibi Hanum was built in 1399 after the uh, horoscope has been done by the astrologers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that. Uh, 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 cathedrals uh, at the end of the Middle Ages uh, were ever been built after a uh, horoscope of election. Uh, even if uh, we know the example in uh, 1906 of the horoscope of the building of uh, St. Peter of Roma, but it was not a uh, horoscope of election. It was a horoscope to try to explain why the the, the, the building 
uh, is so late and problematic. <laughs> <laughs> so it was afterwards they yeah. tried to understand. It's an yeah. horoscope of an event, not not a, a chosen not a moment. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, ask, I ask the question too uh, with the famous horoscope of the built of, uh, of the first stone uh, of the University of uh, Porzhony, uh, now Bratislava, uh, done uh, with the authority of uh, Janusz Vitez, uh, who was uh, the Archbishop, uh, uh, and, uh, and with uh, Matthias Corvinus. And, well, first, the astrologer uh, who built the horoscope, uh, who drew the horoscope, was not so excellent. Uh, that's the first impression. And secondly, I'm not so sure that it was a real uh, horoscope of election. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably you know, you know that uh, David just uh, has. Uh, uh, he just now uh, being we're writing has finished just finished uh, writing a, a, a astrological astrological judgments about uh, nativities, mm -hmm. but he's not able to do the same with horoscopes and with judgments uh, resulting from an election, uh, and that's a, a problem. Uh, that uh, all historians of astrology has to think about. Yes, because we do, we have a lot of books with rules. We they talk about it a lot, but there aren't many straightforward examples in which we can say this is an election and the time was chosen perfectly, or or we have a narrative in which I we chose this moment because it has a certain. That's true. So. There, there are gaps in our knowledge, so there are certain assumptions. We have to be careful yeah. with this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because either the, the, yeah. it was not an election, or the astrologer hated the king. It was so, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. But we have much more uh, documents about interrelations, and, and that, uh, uh, of course, uh, has to be done too. Uh, how many judgments of uh, interrogations we have, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we have, we have probably more, but I don't know yeah. exactly. Interrogations, how. yes, uh, it's a real problem. Yeah. I think I think one of of the main uh, importance of, of, of a line of research, and we're talking about this, is to really assess what kind of materials we have. Because we have excellent works, and there are, but we need a census, something more um, quantifiable, geographically, numbers, types of, of judgments, types of horoscopes. What exactly do we have? I think um, we were, we were always talking about this. Is We would need a large database mm -hmm. done in cooperation with several scholars around, around the world in oh. which we could have a database of what really exists. So then we can have numbers um, and we can, can do other type of, 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 of research and another type of, and we can really understand what exactly is happening, what, what's is the evidence we have about it. Part of the Astro Project. Yeah, the Astro Project <laughs> has that. <laughs> that would be part of yeah. the Astro Project, yeah. yes. Because we oh. need this space to, to begin. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Now, for the um, annual pronostications. We have now uh, a PhD done by Alexandre Thur. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. Uh, but uh, he's, he has not the time, uh, I'm afraid, to publish it. And so it is uh, yet in... Uh, well, but I, I hope he will publish it uh, soon. But uh, it's very interesting because uh, there are very few uh, uh, which are kept before the beginning of the 15th century. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have some for the 13th century, for the 14th century, but yeah. uh, less than 10. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of the 15th century, it's much more frequent. And after, of course, we have much more with the, the, the pressed the, the politicians. 
but uh, before it's uh, very interesting. So you have we have to 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 ask the question about interrogations, uh, about the revolutions, about all kind of uh, of uh, astrological uh, predictions. Mm -hmm. yes. And then organize all the all the all the information yeah. uh, with all the bibliography that already has on specific horoscopes. Well, that is very much what we want to do as our first great step, mm -hmm. like a, an updatable database mm -hmm. with all this. And of course, we will be asking all the the specialists <laughs> uh, for uh, their their ideas and for their contributions but this is what we yeah, really need is, yeah. to to think as um, and then we can develop from there mm -hmm. other studies a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> but one of them uh, returning to to micrologos this edition uh, this would be uh, for instance very important because you um, managed bring together all the all these um, articles and uh, this is part also part of our, of what we want to do like to see what we have regarding uh, articles papers mm -hmm. communications whatever has already been done and can be now uh, applied for context and for the better understanding of other things that we can mm -hmm. eventually discover or yeah. study so this would be like a network of yeah. studies network of studies yeah. so yes thank you very much for this <laughs> i just i hope that the, i had this when i was like <laughs> desperately well no, yeah. <laughs> now i have long, it and long it's term, fine. <laughs> the long term problem i think <laughs> but you you you, you speak about uh, it uh, with uh, with david just i uh, expect no about, uh, uh, you, about your for your database Yes. 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 Been talking yes. yes. Also with with David, and also with Charles Burnett, yes. and uh, and uh, I think the ideal would be that we could all uh, talk together and organize this all this information that is precious mm -hmm. for our for our research. Yes. And yeah. we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just have to keep going. And th this is yeah. a very important step. What yeah. we had, what you have just done, it's a very important step for this because it helps. To organize all the information that we have and it's updated so thank you again very much yeah, 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 yeah. it was well it was difficult but it was very very exciting to to to, to see the evolution on very little detail or very important especially for the many many progress uh, coming from the the middle Europa the Romans and, uh, with uh, there are many works to 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 do about uh, the Krakow mm -hmm. Krakow manuscript. Uh, we, we interviewed a young uh, young scholar, Anton um, huh? Vespremi. I think that's how he pronounced. Yes, it. yes, he's excellent. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, very good. Very work. nice work on that. Very nice work. Yes. We have other scholars also working on, on earlier Byzantine materials, so that will be also a very interesting uh, source. Levan um, Delazo is also working with that, that kind of material, which I'm you know, very curious to see the results. So, so we're trying to... We, we, we're trying to, to create a network, yeah. a very lively and active network, so that we can all exchange ideas mm -hmm. in... Um, uh, real time, so yeah. so to say, <laughs> yeah. and it has been working yeah, it's, very it's fine. It's been very interesting, um, and I would uh, like to to finish with asking you what are your next um, projects. projects uh, well, well uh, have an old project uh, which uh, which is progressing now, just now, is um, an edition, a semi-critical edition of. The uh, version of the Santerium uh, translated by or or ascribed to mm -hmm. Plato of Tivoli, mm -hmm. because in fact there is only one manuscript that said that it is by Plato of Tivoli. Uh, there are some arguments mm -hmm. susceptible to 
indicate that he is not the real translator. Yeah. So I think uh, that uh, uh, very brilliant uh, uh, Italian scholar, uh, Emanuele Robati, is going to probably publish a new edition of the uh, Arabic text Mm -hmm. of the Kitab al-Tamara, Santiloquium, Liber Fructus, mm -hmm. and he wants to, to publish a real critical edition mm -hmm. of the Santiloquium uh, with uh, the translation ascribed to mm -hmm. Plato of Tivoli. But just at during the last uh, past weeks, I've done this semi-critical edition uh, to be uh, published on the Ptolemy Arabic, uh, Arabo, uh, Ptolemaeus Arabus and uh, Latinus uh, website. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not finished because uh, they have some correlations where well, it will never be finished. <laughs> and since that's why a, a real critical edition will be very useful, but a real critical edition with 103 manuscripts, I can do this. So I leave it to Emmanuel <laughs> Robati. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and uh, I published also some uh, critical edition, a uh, semi-critical edition of the other translations, the Mundanorum translations, the translation of uh, Hugo Santalensis, the Yam Previsi Previsi translation, uh, so five. Mm -hmm. Five uh, main uh, translations of the 12th century. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, we'll be able to do the, that during the, this year. Oh. So next year we will. So you, you have uh, normally, I hope, at the end of, of this year, Sidius uh, Bon uh, I hope we will have uh, these five. Uh, semi-critical editions of the Santino Premium online. Yeah, perfect. And you know what will happen? We will be knocking at your door again <laughs> for another podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that is wonderful because one of the the, 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 the matters and the obstacles I find sometimes is I don't know exactly what edition of the Santiloquio the oh. authors are quoting. And sometimes the passages are completely different uh, yeah, from one to another. It's complicated. It's, yeah. 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 And that, well, uh, uh, one of the main interests of my research during the, these last weeks was to check how uh, a Vatican manuscript of the 13th century has been not probably Directly, directly, but uh, indirectly used by Era Radolt, mm -hmm. the publisher of the uh, first edition of the Santero Premium with the Party Party in uh, 1984. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And he showed, he, he used the, 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 mainly the translation ascribed to uh, Plato of Theory, but he used also uh, from this manuscript or uh, another manuscript very similar, uh, other transcription, uh, other tra translations. And uh, it's absolutely incredible to, to see that. Uh, so, uh, Radolt was an excellent scholar and, he, and his team. Uh, worked extremely, extremely well. It's uh, and, and and Bonetto Locatelli, uh, the, the publisher of the second edition of the Quarto Partito and the Santino Creum in nineteen uh, in fourteen ninety three, uh, who published uh, the both translation of the Quarto Partito by Plato of Tivoli and by 
if you use the table, this the Alphonse translation, it's very interesting too. Uh, and the problem is if you are not aware of the fact that there are two uh, distinct translation because it doesn't it doesn't say that the, you you don't understand because you 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 see two 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 phrases two paragraphs who say it's almost the same thing but in a very different manner so it's very really problematic mm -hmm. but it's very interesting on a philological point of view too of course uh, and. Um, there, are, there is a very interesting study done by uh, Doug Haas, uh, uh, of the chief uh, manager of the PAL project, yeah. uh, about uh, uh, the translation of astrological texts uh, done by uh, John of Seville, or the so called son of John of Seville. And he shows that the Mundano version was probably. Uh, according, according to him, down by John of, the, of Seville. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, translation is kept two times in the famous manuscript 16204 of the Bibliothèque Nationale, who belongs to the, the Library of Sorbonne. Mm -hmm. And this was this very manuscript that was annotated mm -hmm. by Jean de Mur. Mm -hmm. But that spoke. Uh, yeah, well, it's fascinating. <laughs> fascinating. Uh, we'll looking, be, we'll looking forward. Looking forward for this publication. This, yeah. And we will uh, certainly ask you for uh, another. another conversation. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank, okay. You very much. Thank you very much. For, for Thank you all so much, and see you another time. Yes. yes. Soon, I hope. Thank you. Yeah, very soon. <laughs>